two chords that are common to all music, but are commonly misunderstood or confused for each other, are the major seven and the dominant seven chords. And so in this video, I wanna to talk to you about how these chords are constructed, how they are named and labeled, what functions they have in your chord progressions, and most importantly, how you can use them in your songwriting. And if you're interested in diving deeper on some of this material, getting access to exclusive content, discounted workshops, live Q&A sessions, please check out our Patreon page, link is in the show notes. So let's look at how these two chords are constructed. And both are built on the major triad. That means both have exactly the same first three notes. That is the one, three, five. The major triad. And in the key of C, that would be C, E, and G. Now, it is the addition of the fourth note that is the difference between these two chords. So in a major seven chord, we would have one, three, five, seven. That's our major seven chord. One, three, five, seven. The only difference between that and the dominant seven chord is that the dominant seven chord uses the flattened seven note instead of the major seven. So here in a dominant seven chord, we would have one, three, five, flat seven. So let's look at how these two chords are labeled or named. And really this is where a lot of the confusion comes into play because a dominant seven chord is written simply as the note name followed by the seven. So if we were writing a C7 chord, you would have C7. That denotes the dominant seven chord. The major seven chord is written with the MAJ7 following the letter or sometimes with a triangle symbol that denotes the major seven. And this does get confusing because when we talk about the major seven, we talk about having the natural seven note as opposed to the flat seven. And yet the dominant seven chord is written with just the seven instead of a flat seven symbol. So this is where it can create a little bit of confusion. But anytime you see just the seven, that means dominant. Anytime you see MAJ seven or triangle seven, that denotes major seven. Okay, so let's talk now about what functions these chords have. If we were in the key of C major, playing these chords in sequence gives us C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and back to C major. So in a diatonic sequence, when we're just playing with triads, the one, the four, and the five are all major. As soon as we turn them into four note voicings, the one and the four become major seven, the five chord becomes dominant. So playing those chords now as four note voicings, we get C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven, G dominant seven, A minor seven, B half diminished, and back to C major seven. Now that you've seen the way these chords are laid out in a diatonic system, let's just look at how they function in a really basic chord progression. So if we were to create a two, five, one chord progression in the key of C, that would be a D minor seven to a G dominant seven to a C major seven. The function of that five chord, the function of that dominant five chord is to pull us back to the home chord. This is so often how we see these two types of chords working in combination. One of the things we can do with chords to make them more colorful is to add extensions to them. And those extensions generally come in the form of the nine, 11 and the 13. And both the major seven and the dominant seven chords sound great with these extensions. So here's a major seven chord, and here's a major nine chord. So there's that nine note added. Here's a dominant seven chord, and here's a dominant 13. 
The extensions are just extra colors, little textures that you add. But one of the things we can do to dominant chords that we don't really do to major seven chords so much is add these things called alterations. And the alterations create even more tension. These come in the form of the flat five, the sharp five, the flat nine, and the sharp nine. So in that example we just had before of the two, five, one, Adding extensions here is definitely an option, but adding extensions doesn't give us the same tension and release as the alterations does. And I'll show you what I mean. If we add extensions to these three chords, say D minor nine, to a G13, to a C major nine. It's lovely. It's got a beautiful sound to it. But now I'm going to add an alteration to this G7 chord. I'm gonna make it a G7 sharp five and listen to what happens. That sharp five really ramps up the tension. And what that means is it creates more satisfaction when that tension is finally released. It creates this really satisfying resolution when we finally move away from that note. Another great way to use these alterations is as the one chord. So Jimi Hendrix Voodoo Child starts with an E7 sharp nine chord. So one of the great ways we can hear the difference between these two chords is in a 12 bar blues. Now a 12 bar blues is comprised of three chords, the one, the four and the five but each of the chords are dominant. And so if we were playing this in the key of G, for example. Now, if you played that kind of blues sound using major seven chords on the one and the four chord, this is what it would sound like. It's a completely different sound, and this highlights the real difference between these two chords. The dominant chord gives us this edginess, it gives us this grittiness based on its construction. And so it's perfect for blues, it's perfect for funk, and a whole range of other genres. The major seven has a sweetness to it, it has a lushness to it. And so having both of these chords in our repertoire is hugely important because they do serve very different functions, and they do give us access to really different sounds. Let's look at a song that uses both major seven and dominant seven chords beautifully, and that is the song Isn't She Lovely by Stevie Wonder. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she wonderful? Isn't she precious? Less than one minute old. I never thought that love. So there's a song demonstrating beautifully an arrangement of both major seven and dominant seven chords. But there's a few other things we should probably look at. So this song's in the key of E major, but we're starting on the relative minor, the C sharp minor, the sixth chord, before moving to a little F sharp dominant chord, which would normally be an F sharp minor. But in this case, it's been changed to a dominant chord that then pulls us to the B11 which is the five chord of E before coming back round to a G sharp dominant chord, which again is a borrowed chord, but that borrowed chord has been placed there to pull us back now to the C sharp minor before we go around again. And then the next time round, I did a little move where I went from the B11 to a B7 flat nine. That's one of those alterations we were talking about before. And again, it just creates this lovely little tension, which resolves beautifully. 
beautifully then to the E major. Back to our G sharp dominant, but this time, instead of going back to the C sharp minor, we go to an A major seven. We fall then to a G sharp dominant. Back to our C sharp minor seven. F sharp dominant again. B11, B7 flat nine, landing on the final E chord. The major seven and dominant seven chords are such an important part of any songwriter's toolkit. And hopefully this video has helped clarify how they're different in terms of construction, how they're different in terms of sound, and how you can use them in your compositions. Happy songwriting, see you soon.